Major enemy infiltration in the area of Grafhorst. At least one mechanized battalion. Armored units have been spotted crossing the Iron Curtain at the crossing point. A border guard patrol group has reported being under enemy fire. It sounds like they need help. And here we are in the first mission. This is a tutorial-like mission, so the enemies we'll be facing will mostly be pretty bad, pretty passive, and we'll have lots of times to just stop and think what we really want to do. That's important because war game is not about quick reactions. Well, sometimes it is, but mostly it's about understanding what units you have at your disposal and how best to use them. We have four Leopard 1A1 tanks against two Warsaw Pack T-34 tanks. So, what's the best way to take out two tanks with four? We'll set up the entire fight to our advantage. We'll fire from the edge of the cliff, from cover, and arrange it, the arrival so so that every tank gets to shoot at once before the enemy gets to fire. And that's one. And there we go, two tanks they didn't get even to fire one shot. I'll just hold position for a moment, check out the enemy has no more units in the area. Looks like they'll try again with two tanks. I have excellent positions, so there's no need for me to do anything. I can just sit here and shoot at the enemy until I win this fight. That's one. Ah, they got a uh, shot off. Oh well, at least it wasn't one of my tanks, it was just some bodyguard infantry. The game wants to introduce us to the concept of fast movement. Fast movement binds the units to roads, so they'll move faster, they'll use less fuel, but of course since they'll be stuck to roads they are pretty predictable. So the key art of doing long movements in war game is understanding when you can use roads and when you can't. We get our first recon unit, an armored car with a 20mm cannon. It's lightly armored and armed, so it won't be a match to any, any real fighting units, but it's got good optics. It can see units far away, and it's small, so we can do sneak and peeks with it. Looks like we spotted a few T-34 tanks over there. So again, the problem is how do I set up the fight so that I'll have the advantage. Here my key advantages are I can see them, but they can see me. And one of the enemy tanks is behind the river. So I'll veer off a little to the left to cut out the one enemy tank and I'll try to
to arrange the opening shots so that I'll get off a full salvo before the enemy gets to fire even once. Unfortunately, that plan doesn't quite work. I'm just a bit too far away, so I need to close in before three of my tanks get to fire. Fortunately, they fire with with good accuracy. That's two down. We'll pick off the one tank from our side. Or at least that was the idea. The tank on the other side of the river woke up, so we'll just deal with that first. In the bottom of the screen you can see the enemy unit statistics. How many hit points it had left, what weapons, ammo and so on. Probably the most important thing is the morale. Here it is shaken. It's very important, very important indeed to get off the first shots so that while your units are firing calmly the enemy will be panicked or worse. Looks like no more enemies in the immediate area so we'll advance to the crossroads see what's there then Let's see what comes up. One of the beautiful things in Wargame is that computer doesn't always play exactly the same way. A uh, computer likes to move his units around, so while in theory I know where they are supposed to be, they necessarily are not. So some some am amount of caution is in order. I'll take good cover here, set up my tanks again in good firing positions and bring the scout forward. If I spot anything we'll kill kill it before moving forward. Good scouting is important. It's so important I'll probably keep repeating it over and over again. Looks like two T-55 tanks. One goes down immediately. The other one is charging us because he doesn't see our positions. We are hidden deep in the woods and tanks have bad optics so he needs to close in before he can get the shot off. Effectively our scout won that fight for us. The East Germans bring a couple more armored personal carrier forwards. like they sent some infantry too. That's a waste of man. There's, there's no point sending infantry over open ground. They'll just get cut down immediately. For the first time we get supply trucks. We can also now call in reinforcements from the friendly captured zone Kilo. We only get a few units 
so I'm calling all of them in right away. We could have chosen a few more supply trucks or maybe another scout, but I think we are better off with more tanks. The logistic trucks are important. They'll repair, refuel and rearm our units. So one of the key mechanics in war game is keeping your units supplied. As you can see, supplies are drained at a fast rate. So I'll need to find a forward supply base to refill my supply trucks if I want to have any more ammunition for my tanks. We have two objectives here. We have the primary objective of clearing Alpha and the secondary objective of destroying anything that we find at Foxtrot. I'll try to complete every secondary objective in the game. Some of them can be pretty hard, but I'll try anyway. Since we now have a full company of armor, and they'll have to cross a choke point, best to charge in at full speed. There's no point delaying over that bridge. It's a horrible position. Once we get over the Iron Curtain, we'll split up, form a firing line, and see what's what. We spot some East German units, but we don't... don't identify them yet. We only can see that they exist. It can take a while to identify the enemy units. You can zoom in close and try to guess based on the unit silhouette what sort of unit it is. But even that isn't completely reliable. Again, good positioning is more important than micro. All I ha have, have to do there is make sure I got a good firing line and let my units do the rest of the work. Now we can move on and capture the supply base. The yellow circle marks the, marks the area in which we can repair and resupply our units. I've also called up the supply trucks. They'll refill at the forward base. It's gonna take a while, so I might just as well get moving with my combat units. If you stack enough units on the roads, you can get all sorts of interesting traffic jams. If possible, it's better to face out the units a little, so that they'll drive in queues. You probably can't see it from this distance, but the units will always try to drive on the right side of the road. 
that helps when you are sending supply trucks back and tanks forward. Anyway, the last objective we have is taking over Alpha. And that's a bit of a sticky wicket there. We must get to good positions. I'm gonna deploy at the woods north of Bravo. But Alpha has lots and lots of good cover for defenders. So I'm gonna have to take it slowly. First we set up the firing line once again. The supply trucks get behind the line to stay out of the enemy line of sight. You don't want to expose those to fire. The computer will shoot at them and they are always, well, almost always unarmored. One shot, one kill, and that's a lot of supplies that you won't be using. Looks like we found yet another T-34 tank. Let's take a couple of shots at it, see what comes up. Once again the enemy didn't get a shot off, he just didn't see us. I'm just gonna wait at these positions for a while. Push the scout a little bit forward, see if enemy tries to approach with anything. And there's again something. Doesn't look like a tank though. No turret. Well, whatever it was, it's now gone. We have spotted a uh, BMP-1. BMPs are a bit problematic because they carry anti-tank missiles. And the missiles out outrange us by quite s some margin. So when we start our approach, we'll have to charge in with everyone on the line. Here one of my tanks suffered a status effect. They got detracked in the woods. Uh, it, it'll last for one minute and during that time the tank can't move. The rest of the units can though, so they'll, they'll get to the line and the detract tank will be joining us as soon as possible. Fortunately, the enemy units approaching only have machine guns. That was a bit of bad luck for me. Now one of my tanks is routed and I can't control it anymore. It'll drive off somewhere, fortunately, towards my side of the map this time. I'll split it off and if possible send it back to Foxtrot to get repaired. If not, then It'll just have to wait there until it comes down. Trying to route the enemy tanks is important. You can't control it. It won't shoot at anything. It'll just stand there or drive off somewhere. 
with no control. Those are the easiest tanks to kill. Looks like I'm out of luck. I'll just have to do this with 11 tanks then. The BMP has started aiming and has fired off a missile. We are out of time. We must move forward now. Let's hope there are not too many defenses in the hedgerows. That's a couple T-55 tanks. One of them got stunned though, so he won't be shooting back. And the other tank was routed, so it didn't even attempt to shoot back. That's good for us. I'm pretty sure there still are some enemy units in the hedges. So we'll approach cautiously, keep a bit of a distance, and if we see something, we'll shoot back in force. No micromanagement, position and firepower will win the d d day for us. Some more infantry. Badly placed, so no problem for us. But if there is infantry in the hedges, we won't be spotting them until they get the shot off at us. And I'm a little bit scared of the anti-tank weapons they carry. And there they are. Were. One more jeep, and that is it, the first mission. The resistance at Ubersfelde has contained the first assault, but NVA mechanized columns managed to break through at other points. Here we have the victory screen. We can see what objectives we achieved, how many command stars we earned, and what we managed to kill. The kills are sorted per unit here. It also shows our losses, but we didn't have any, so go us. These are the unlockables for the next mission. I'll be posting in the thread and you get to choose what units I'll be using in the next mission. This is Hope Gadling signing out. Peace.